الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Islam despises terrorism and people who commit heinous acts in the name of Islam only serve to belittle themselves and attempt to tarnish the image of Islam. However, they are not representative of Islam and they cannot hurt Islam. And as Muslims, we would like everyone to know. And this message is for inclusive of Muslims and both not Muslims and non-Muslims that Islam is free from terrorist ideology. And terrorist ideologues have no place in Islam. That does not mean that there are not those elements that exist in the Muslim community, unfortunately, that have been around since the almost since the since the uh, right before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu died, that there was a man who came to the Prophet sallallahu and accused him of being unjust. And he grabbed the Prophet ﷺ. And the companions wanted to harm this individual. How could you do this to the Holy Prophet of Allah ﷺ? And the man demanded that the Prophet ﷺ be just. And the Prophet ﷺ, after clearing up the issue so that the man, the man left, the Prophet ﷺ said that from this man will come a people that will uh, read the Qur'an, but it will not pass beyond their throats. Meaning that they will not understand the Qur'an. They will not practice the Qur'an. And this is the beginning of the first sect in Islam known as the Khawarij. Known as the people who are extreme in their beliefs. And they believe in rebelling against the Muslim authority and they believe in accusing their other Muslim brothers and sisters of apostasy without looking at the conditions for doing so. Because yes, a person can enter Islam and a person can leave Islam. And I think there's no mystery with that. Just as a person can become a Christian and a person can leave Christianity. A person can become Jewish, or they can leave Judaism. This is not a, a, a complicated uh, concept. However, it is a complicated and complex issue when it, it comes to declaring someone to be uh, a non-Muslim after they were a believer. This is something reserved for the scholars. And this ideology... Those people who accuse others of being heretical apostates from the religion because of the sins that they do have made a grave error and they have misguided themselves and misguided others. And from the likes of those people come those individuals who are extreme and believe in doing uh, all kind of heinous acts and claim that this is a type of jihad or a type of uh, advancing Islam. That they believe that they can better the Muslim community's state of affairs and condition through doing these extremist actions. However, they're wrong. They only serve to belittle themselves and tarnish the name of Islam, although they cannot harm Islam, as I mentioned before. And many of these individuals believe that they are the people of Islam. They are the Muslihun. As Allah mentions about them, that they say that they are, we were only, rec you know, bringing rectification, bringing righteousness, but rather, they were the Mufsidun. They are the people who spread fitna, trials and tribulations and difficulties 
for everyone through their actions. They cause the believers to be persecuted wherever they are, just for looking and trying to emulate or imitate the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu by having the beard, by wearing uh, the Islamic garb and having it above your ankles. Those are some of the outward appearances that people are being targeted because of the um, evil acts of certain individuals. And that's why I decided to speak very briefly about this issue to show that Islam distanced itself from extremist and extremist ideology. And on the, uh, in the same token, Islam is also free from secularist ideology as well, which can be equally as extreme in the eyes of the believer. Why is this? Because a person who believes, who claims Islam and adheres to Islam, or at least outwardly speaks and say they adhere to Islam, but they do not believe in the Islamic law, in the Islamic way of life, in praying, in fasting, in preparing themselves for prayer, and all the spiritual rituals that Islam has legislated for us, in the punishments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us in the Quran, has legislated for us, in those actions and deeds and sayings that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has clarified for us and given us as a way of life, the people who do not believe in this are in fact rejecting Islam. And this is something equally as dangerous as those extremists. You have the extremists, like people like bin Laden and the Al-Qaeda and all these other deviant groups who deviate away from the Quran and the Sunnah, the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet and the way of the Salaf Asali. Yes, Salaf Asali, the Salafi methodology. What is the Salafi methodology? It means that a person is trying to follow the Quran and the authentic traditions of the Prophet Wasallam, and they are following the way of the companions of the Prophet Wasallam. That's what it means. It's not a new group. It's not a new ideology. And so it's important and imperative to know that that is the middle path. If someone wants to know and follow the middle path, follow the way of the Salaf Fasale. And if someone wants to know the truth about the Salaf Fasale, then know that they are neither extreme like those terrorist ideologues who uh, spread harm throughout the earth and deviance and claim and these these uh, you know claim claim to be in the name of Islam and in the name of jihad and so forth. These individuals we are not we are free from. Also the other individuals, the secularists, who believe in just throwing away all the principles of Islam to where you only have Islam in your name, or that Islam is just a personal practice. No, Islam will never be that. Islam will never have the concept that uh, many other uh, paths in religious way, uh, religious paths have chosen to just completely remove the religious, the religiousness from every aspect of, of life except for the personal. No, Islam is full of Islamic institutions, and this was the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Go back to the Quran, go back to the authentic Sunnah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Alaykum bi Sunnati wa Sunnat al Khulafa al Rashidin al Mahdiin, Adu Alayha bi Nawadij, wa Iyakum wa Muhtatar al Mur, bi Nukul Bidat al Dalala." The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that it is upon you, meaning the community of Muslims, my Sunnah, my way, my path. And that of my companions. So anyone who curses or disagrees with the companions of the Prophet ﷺ in their belief and in their understanding and their fiqh and their jurisprudence, then they're not following the sunnah and the order of the Prophet ﷺ. Because he said to follow the way of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali. And to stay away from extremism. The Prophet ﷺ said, and beware of extremism. And the Prophet Sallallahu also, it was not even a concept, even the early deviant sects didn't have a concept 
of separation of church and state, or that you should separate the religious life is, is, is just a small aspect. It should be delegated to only rituals in the home and that it has nothing to do with the rest of your life. No, that's equally as extreme because they are they people who believe in this ideology believe in dismantling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's institutions and dismantling the Islamic belief and foundation of the religion in its totality to where there's nothing left except for one who says that he, is, he or she is Muslim. And this is equally incorrect and equally deviant and equally as dangerous of an ideology. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said was correct, that, that was correct, was only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anything that I said that was incorrect was from myself and from the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.